Hey everyone, this is the first time I've made a video directly for the benefit of escort clients who are, of course, predominantly men. Now, I get contacted semi-regularly from clients who view my videos asking me to cover particular topics. However, my mission and my channel is dedicated to the provision of high-quality business information, resources, and support for escorts. So if I have time, I do my best to answer any specific questions which come through to me from clients, and then I get back to my work for escorts. I've decided to make this video though because I believe what I do have to share on this topic will be helpful to clients, which then by extension will be helpful to escorts, therefore making the industry a better place for us all. So without further ado, here are the five things men should know before seeing escorts by an escort. Obviously, men aren't the only users of escorts, but they are the most common clients I deal with. And so I've made this video with that generality in mind. However, I suspect any user of escorts could reap some benefit from the five things I'm about to say. Number one, be clear on why you're there and don't forget it. The specific reasoning behind the decision to utilize an escort services is of course unique to every individual. However, here are some common themes I've encountered over the years from clients on why they do this. A bucket list item. Some men have just always been intrigued or curious about the idea of seeing an escort and decide one day to give it a go. To escape sexlessness, whether that be because the guy is single, in a sexless relationship, too busy to date, or for any other reason. For relaxation and stress relief. Personally, when I'm stressed, I like a good old Netflix binge or a hot stone massage. But some people prefer the company of a woman with a side of sexual release. And who am I to judge? To feel desired, adored, and masculine. Now, of course, one may ask, is it healthy to get these feelings satisfied by an escort and not from yourself within? Good question. People satisfy all sorts of emotional needs in unhealthy ways or healthy ways every day. To experience a particular fantasy, physical desire, or sexual variety. Have you always been into an Asian woman but never dated one? Are you interested in kink and BDSM? Most desires and fantasies can be satisfied by one escort or another. And lastly, for the sheer fun of it. Although I'm sure if we were able to dig deeper with these people, there'd be something going on which more likely fit into the above five categories. Now, I'm not here to judge the healthiness or morality of any of the above reasons. That's another video for another day. But here's what I do want to say. Whatever reason you may have initially for seeing an escort, don't lose conscious sight of it, because if you do, you may find yourself looking for something in the wrong place or get hooked and not be able to stop. Only you can decide what a right or wrong reason is to see an escort, but don't delude yourself into thinking you're seeing escorts to, say, try a particular physical fantasy you've always had, when actually you're just lonely and looking for a girlfriend. It typically won't end well for you, this type of delusion. Now, I'm not saying you can't start seeing escorts for one reason and then continue seeing them for another reason. Just be sure to retain your personal integrity and relationship with yourself by having self-honesty. Sex is a dopamine-inducing activity and it feels good to feel good. But this isn't something you want to let get out of hand. So be intentional about what you're doing and have the courage to continue to assess it and decide if it's the right reason for you to be seeing an escort. Number two. Don't engage in any unprotected services, especially if you have a partner. When I was working in a parlor, there were days I was with six different men or more, and maybe even a fellow escort too. Sexual intercourse of any variety, of course, comes with risks, let's face it. But let's not ignore the pure facts. Escorts, although extremely health conscious most of the time, because their income depends on it, are exposed to the potentiality of sexual health issues to a much higher frequency than the typical person. Many STIs are symptomless. Even for escorts who get tested frequently and thoroughly, they don't know they've got it till they find out they've got it. I have had two STIs during my career, and I possibly spread it to clients. I didn't know till tests came back positive, and all I could do at that time was text them and let them know. In both instances, I was charging above $1,000 an hour. Ironically, during my years as a high volume worker at a lower rate, I didn't get anything. So don't make the mistake of thinking higher class, lower class, a particular price point guarantees your safety or increases risk. 
you can reduce risk by simply using protection for all services, including mutual oral. It may not be as fun or feel as good, but it sure beats dealing with sexual diseases. Some STIs are treatable and others are not. Do you really want to spend the rest of your life living with genital herpes? And yes, that can happen because you didn't resist the feeling of mouth on skin. Most men I know don't last very long anyway. So you've literally risked the future of your sexual health for the sake of a few minutes of oral fun. If you have a partner you're sexually active with, remember that each time you step into a room and engage in physical intercourse with another person, whether it be paid or unpaid, you risk your partner's sexual health too. Consider whether you want to be responsible for your partner living their lives with an untreatable STI, especially if they aren't aware of your activities and they believe they're in a monogamous, risk-free sexual relationship. Now, of course, using a rubber only gets you so far. STIs and other health conditions can be contracted from kissing and touching. It is rare, but it can happen. So also consider being mindful of using one hand to touch the escort and one hand to touch yourself. It may feel less natural, less organic, but again, herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea, warts, the list goes on and on. Now, I have never had a penis, but I hear those things have a mind of their own. So if you're struggling to hear this, then maybe it's time to give yours a good, stern talking to. Number three, performance sex versus reality. An escort who's doing their job well is trying to satisfy their clients' desires and needs in absence of their own. Because just like any other service business, their income depends on the satisfaction of their clients and their likelihood of returning to spend their money again. That is what is going on when you're with an escort and you feel like she's a goddess on earth who gets you, wants you, doesn't say no, is both attractive and attracted to you, and whatever else you might be frothing over. That is literally the job, but it is not real. Let me repeat that. It's a job and it isn't real. Every time I stepped into the room with a client as Isabel Fox, I left my own personal sexual needs, desires, and personality at the door. No client of mine ever really knew the real me, especially not sexually. I was always performing, even with the clients whose time I genuinely enjoyed. I can honestly say I enjoyed my job as an escort, sometimes even sexually. But 99.9% of the clients I was with, I would not have been with if I wasn't getting paid. Think about your job. Isn't it part of the gig to cater to your clients' needs, to make sure they like you, are happy, satisfied, and want to come back? Of course it is. This is one of the trickiest parts of being a good escort with high repeat clientele. You constantly have to manage the boundary between reality and fantasy. The trick is to make an encounter with a client feel real, natural, and authentic without involving actual reality. Experience escorts who have either been taught by someone else how to do this or who have been burnt by their inability to do this and therefore lost clients will take the lead and enforce boundaries which protect you both while making sure your needs are met during a booking. Inexperienced or unaware escorts will not. They may naively blur the line between work and the real world, thinking that that's what they need to do to keep a client coming back, or because they can't enforce emotional boundaries of their own. Let's face it, it's an intimate service, and many people struggle to separate sex and emotion. In my experience, a lot of men struggle to do this when the sex is very good, very self-satisfying, and when it's a novelty. Keep in mind that it is literally an escort's job to be all these things. To be great in bed, to satisfy your every need, and to provide novelty. So do yourself and the escort you're seeing a favor. Don't complicate your life or make her job harder by trying to blur the lines. And here are ways clients blur the lines, sometimes even unintentionally. And therefore, here's what you should not do with an escort. Don't ask her her real name. Don't elongate contact and communication beyond the arrangement of a booking. Please don't ask her about her personal relationships or share too deeply about yours. And don't ask for discounts, extra time, additional services, or social encounters in absence of a clear commercial reason. Now, some escorts may gift a bonus time or something else because you've written them a review or offer a special seasonal discount to drum up business 
or extra bookings just like any other business would. But don't confuse these things for being anything more than what it is. Just a business person trying to run their business and earn more money. And lastly, to really drive this point home and to twist the knife in deeper to make sure you have thoroughly gotten the point. I'm going to share with you what escorts are commonly thinking about when they're physically spending time with you. And I know because I was an escort for six years and I work with escorts every day and we're women so we talk about these things because we talk about everything. Let's go through it now. Escorts are thinking about this. One, which bill they're going to be paying with your booking fees. Two, how many other bookings they have today and how much they're going to make. Three, if their phone has received any booking requests while they've been with you. Four, how much longer it is till you're likely to come and if there will be enough time left on the clock that you'll expect them to make you come again. Five, their itemized to-do list for the day. Six, what groceries they need to get from the store on the way home. And seven, how long they've been on top for and if it's acceptable yet to change positions because their legs are hurting. Yes, men. Us women can think about all those things and you won't even know. But now you do, because I just told you. So remember, performance sex and reality sex are not the same. And that's to your benefit, by the way, that they're not. Because most clients genuinely want an experience which is all about them, which is why they're paying. You don't want an escort who can't put on a performance. The experience for you won't be as satisfying. Trust me. So that brings us to item number four, pick a professional. Like most services, the professionalism of the escort you choose will have a direct correlation on the quality of your experience with her in the room and therefore the satisfaction you experience. Now, I frequently get asked how to select a good escort. And here's how. You want to pick an escort who does the following. Has an advert where clear effort has been made about the service they provide what's involved in having a booking with them, and how to contact them. Just like any other business, you want to pick an escort who puts effort into her advertising. Pick an escort who responds somewhat promptly. Now, I say somewhat because many escorts do not do the job full-time, so I suggest you make a booking in advance if you really want to have the best experience. Now, I know, I know the desire for an escort services often comes on in the heat of the moment, right? If that's the case for you, then if you've made an effort to contact that escort at least in advance before and paid a deposit and done her screening so she knows you're serious, she will be more likely to try to accommodate you at short notice. Pick an escort who responds very politely and asks questions about what you're looking for. Picking an escort who's polite is important because this shows she has a genuine care for the quality of your experience. You want an escort who wants to give you a good time not someone who's jaded by the job and angry at all men. And lastly, pick someone who keeps to appointment times and plans. But this applies to you too. Escorts deal with an endless amount of time wasters. If you do things like cancel, change plans, stall to make a deposit, an escort is likely to mentally place you in her time waster category and treat you that way, which is as a lower priority. Also, know that escorts have reporting databases. Any untoward behavior from you is likely to be recorded for all escorts to have access to, which will impact your ability to book good quality escorts who aren't desperate for work in the future. So basically, just act like a decent human and make decency a screening requirement of your own and you are likely to have a good time. Also consider looking for reviews from other clients on escort review forums. But keep in mind that some escorts do not allow reviews because they feel they're inappropriate or they're concerned about their privacy. And number five, use anonymity wisely. If you've ever used an anonymous platform like Reddit or Twitter, you've probably observed some truly tragic and appalling human behavior. And the adult industry can be very similar. When accountability is removed, some people reveal a very ugly side of themselves. So don't be one of these people. Remember that on the other end of a text or email or phone call you might be having with an escort is an actual human being. Now, I could make this all about appealing to your morality and not treating any human, whether they be an escort or a waitress, like slaves or objects, but I won't because sadly I know it's not nearly as effective as the alternative strategy I'll use instead. 
which is appealing to your self-interest. Guess what you will almost never get from an escort? A refund. And as I said before, us escorts have reporting databases. So if you do anything shit, other escorts will likely find out and it will cost you money. Either because you may pay a deposit, act shit, and then find an escort won't give it back to you and cancels the booking, or because all the good escorts will stop seeing you. And you'll be left with service providers who don't take pride in their job, who don't care about giving a good service, and will see clients with bad reviews. And it will not be a fun experience. These escorts still likely charge hundreds of dollars. And no matter how dissatisfied you are, all escorts get payment up front and we have a no refund policy. And I mean, who are you going to complain to about it? Your local ombudsman? I think not. So don't be shit, even when no one is watching, because we are not so secretly reporting you anyway, and the fun and magic of the industry you could experience will be off limits to you. Finally, a quick word on dating escorts. If you're single and she's single and some genuine sparks fly, you might find yourself wanting to date an escort you've seen. Many couples meet at work. I've dated three clients in my career. Here is my best advice. Make a clear decision either way, whether you want to date this girl or use her paid services, and then commit to it. Not only does blurring the lines complicate both your life and hers, it also leaves you in a situation where you get the worst of both worlds in basically every way. Performance sex can be great because it's totally self-indulgent, but reality sex is amazing too because you get to really connect with another human being on so many levels. But when you blur the lines, you won't get to experience either with this person. The escort won't treat you completely as a client anymore. She won't bring her A-game to every booking in order to keep your business. But she won't be totally herself either. So decide together if you're dating or paying. If you decide to date, give it a go. And if it doesn't work out, just find another escort. There are endless options to choose from. And lucky you, I've now given you clear instructions on how to find someone good. So don't worry, you won't be missing out. That's all for this video. I hoped it helped. Have fun, be healthy, and bye for now. If you want to learn more escorting tips, just click the link below this video.